Yeah, and by the way, one of the largest of its kind in the world of these training campuses here at the BC IT Aerospace uh, Training Campus. We are going to be doing some maintenance on various planes this morning, jo uh, Riaz and Jody. First up, though, we are going to tackle this helicopter. It's going to be a good live eye today. Thanks. If you happen to have a helicopter, these will be things that you need to know. Definitely, we're here at the BCIT Aerospace Training Campus, and we've got Rick here. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm great, thank you, and I'm glad I've got a kindred uh, female yep. here. Amanda, <laughs> you must be among, I guess, only a few females in this program. Absolutely. <laughs> so what does that feel like? You know, I really don't notice a lot of the time. I'm so used to having so many guys around me that it doesn't even phase me that I'm one of the few girls. That's good. That's good to know. Okay, let's talk. We got about a minute and 20 seconds here a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about, I guess, the, the um, I don't know, the body here of the helicopter. The body of the helicopter is a Jet Ranger. Okay. And it's a, a B model. And what Amanda and I are going to be uh, showing you today is actually a tech, uh, tech generator. Um, uh, a test, I guess, is okay. that what you call it? And for mom and dad out there, just to let you know, it's just like having an alternator in your car. Good to know. Okay, let's make our way and do this test here. So let's, uh, what are we actually going to be testing for here, Amanda? All right, so we're going to want to make sure that the RPM that it indicates on this machine is the same RPM that the pilot is going to see in the cockpit. Okay, so for people that are looking here, what, what will happen if it's not calibrated then? Uh, either if this machine moves up and that one doesn't, we're looking at the gas producer test here then the it just means that the tack generator is not functioning properly. So you basically turn it on? Yep, so we're going to turn it on and we're going to hit start. And we're going to start turning it up here. As you can see, this number is moving and we'll slowly start to see the dial on the gas producer moving up as well. Excellent, so this is very important for safety first again for you to do this job. Absolutely, we need to check this all the time. Excellent, well we're going to continue with our maintenance here of various aircrafts here at the BCIT Aerospace Training Campus all morning long. And Joni and Riaz, what do you think? Am I looking the part? Rocking if nothing it. else, I got the fashion part down. Who are you wearing, Don? Who are you wearing? <laughs> who, who, am I, who am I wearing? Oh, Helicopter yeah, I'll, chic. I'll figure that one out. <laughs> And we are here again at the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus inside the cockpit of a Boeing 737. And Manny, everything seems to be running just fine. Nice and smooth, right? No. What? What's that? It's detecting a fire or an overheat condition on the right engine. So coming up, Jody and Riaz, in about seven minutes, we are going to try to fix this very problem. Hold tight. Yeah, hey, thanks very much. We're here at the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus, and we've got Manny, who was hanging out with me in the cockpit earlier. We're going to do some regular maintenance on this, and, of course, we got Dave here from BCIT. He's, he can handle this with me, right? Yes, he can. Okay, excellent, because this is what you guys do. All right, yep. so we heard a bit of an alarm. What are the things that we want to check for? We want to check uh, there's two loops in the fire detection system. We've got one up top, one at the bottom, and the loop says right here, and then we're checking to see if the loop is chafing against any other metal. Like, oh. for example, this tube. Okay, so for people that want out sh chafing, it's the same kind of chafing we think of, things rubbing together. Yes. So we're looking for yep. space, right? Well, yes, yes, Okay, so, so right now it looks like there's space. Yep. So this is good. That's this is good. a good thing, yeah. all right. Yeah. And what else are we going to be looking for knowing that there's now no chafing? We're just going to fall, fall the way through. Just, we'll start from the back end and then just work its way to the front here. And we're just going to look at the electrical uh, wiring to see if it's all connected, no electrical problems. Excellent. And it seems like it's pretty good. Now, Dave, how often are we doing maintenance? on any kind of aircraft. How does this work? It'll run a number of hours. It would be, say, a 100-hour inspection or a 200-hour inspection. And depending on the maintenance program the company has in place is how many hours often they'll do their checks. Okay, so the checks are done regularly. Some parts are, are checked a little bit more often. For anyone that is looking at checking out the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus, how long is this program? It'll run you about 18 months. Okay. And it runs every eight weeks we have an intake, and every eight weeks we have a graduation. Excellent. And so when do you graduate? In another two months. Another two months? Two months. And what do you hope to do? What, what's your goal? I'm um, just going to start applying wherever I can. Wherever it's not a big deal. I just want to get my first job. And uh, that's just looking forward to getting my first job. Well, you're doing pretty good yeah. so far, at least with the TV part. And you yeah. seem to look like you know what you're doing. For more details, again, on the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus, you can go to their website. But we got lots more coming up throughout the morning. Jody and Riaz. Mm -hmm. BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus. And Glenn, what course are we focusing on right now? This area? Well, this morning we're looking at our, our gas turbine program. So this is a 10-month program which uh, brings students in, gives them the opportunity to learn about all the different components and different parts of the gas turbine engine, how to 
tear it down and put it back together again. And so that's what we're looking at right now. Let's talk through some of these components. Okay, well, this is a Rolls-Royce Spay engine, and the students have torn it down for an inspection in the uh, the hot section, the back end. So Rolls-Royce, got... just like the car? Yeah, exactly. Yeah? Same okay. idea. All right. Exactly. Uh, air, <laughs> aircraft division. So we've got a couple of turbine discs that they've taken out. So these go back into the engine uh, shortly. Uh, we're just at the assembly point now. And there's four students up there right now. Does it usually take four people to put together an engine like uh, this? Depends on how big the engine is, but uh, it can take anywhere from one person on a smaller engine to uh, quite a large group of people as the engines get bigger. And obviously we're looking not at speed being the foremost no, of importance, no. right? In this job, it's more <laughs> important to uh, make sure you do it right before you uh, start doing it fast, that's and, for sure. And let's talk to Derek right now, one of the students here. What exactly are you doing, Derek? Uh, I'm just tightening up some bolts on our uh, first stage turbine here for the shroud. And uh, then we're going to get our outer combustion case over here, mount it all up, seal everything up. And uh, yeah, continue on. So when you're looking at putting together an engine, I have to think that you must have been really good at puzzles <laughs> when you were younger, were you? Uh, yeah, I was fairly good. <laughs> I was, I like mechanics and cars and stuff, so I just thought I'd get into this. Something cool. Lots of attention to detail. That's got to oh, be one yeah. of the big things for this uh, gig. That's for sure. For more details on the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus and the programs that they offer here, you can, of course, go to their website. But this is very detailed work. I don't think I could handle this, uh, Jody and Rias. We'll keep you at what you're good at, which is keeping us informed on the live. I thank you so much, Don. So once again, Jody and Riaz, we're here at the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus, and we've got lots more coming up on BT, but it's so cool. If you're someone who loves planes, how cool is it to be in this big space here? It's the largest, by the way, in the world. Very cool. Pretty unique spot right there. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Kassam, what are we seeing right now here? What we're doing right now, we're deploying these devices that are called the uh, trailing edge flaps. And these devices are responsible to augment the lift when the aircraft needs it. Okay, so this is something that when we're on the plane and we hear that sound, this is exactly what's happening. That is absolutely true. Now, that this is, is part true. of what program here at the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus? Well, these devices are, albeit hydraulically operated, they're monitored electrically. And there's an indicator in the cockpit that needs to be monitored and we want to make sure that the indication is congruent to what's actually happening right here. So our program is the avionics program which is a contracted word for avi aviation electronics. Okay so we've got a lot of students here right now and this is part of their training to work on this maintenance right? That is correct actually those students are the one that will be fixing these flaps. <laughs> Excellent speaking of students that are working on things we're gonna make our way over to Ed. Ed what are you working on right now? Uh, here we're doing a transponder test. Okay. Um, a transponder is what uh, air traffic control uses to locate and identify airplanes. Um, here we're using this box which mimics a ground station to tell if our airplane here is generating the correct code and broadcasting it correctly. Um, this 2275 is what identifies this specific plane. Excellent. So uh, this, again, for anyone that's interested in this program, uh, Kassam, what's involved? How much time is involved? How many courses approximately are we looking at? Well, this course is uh, 80 weeks long, which starts with a 32-week uh, Common Core Electronics as a prerequisite, and then you slide into our program. It is uh, heavy in electronics. Just because our uh, domain is electricity, electronics, and anything that has electricity going to it, uh, such as this system as transponder, which is really, really vital to the aircraft navigation. Now, we've been using this WestJet, WestJet plane all morning long. Uh, they've actually donated this for you guys Absolutely. for this purpose, this right? Absolutely. This has been a great asset to the school. I mean, this is what mimics the uh, airliners and the transport aircraft. Uh, we get systems in here that we cannot have in smaller airplanes. So this has been a great addition to our campus. Very cool. If you're interested, again, in the BCIT Aerospace Technology Campus, you can, of course, go to their website for more details. But Jody and Riaz, a real education this morning. Thanks to all the students who made their way out here today.